Hi, Chopper. Good morning. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. I saw your guy down. Did you have the... Go ahead. Oh, Scott. Yeah. I was going to. Hey, that was a lot. I didn't feel so great by the time I came back from California. How was going from California to Maryland? I'm used to traveling. <laughs> okay. That's, that's I think it was like the time change. You know what? When I had the factory in China, the 13 hours didn't bother me. My factory in Italy was seven. West Coast. Oh, me up. West Coast is the only. Oh, my goodness. The three hours messes me up. I don't know. It why. does. It's really weird. <laughs> did it make did you did it make all your update Zoom today or no? Yes. Uh so, yes. So that's probably why everybody's gonna be late. Yep. Yeah, it didn't connect right away. So, so Danielle, you look like you're on a reality TV show. Hey, here's how we do I do. I know. I'm going to take my uh, camera off because right, I'm driving. All right, but... all right. yeah, that's good. <laughs> and did Scott give you the debrief? He did. He was very, very excited. You know what, though, Rob? It was like the first, which it was so refreshing to see. Um, but it was the first time I think he's ever really been at, I don't know if he's ever gone to a real estate event. You know, like I've traveled all over and did a lot of the Tom Ferry when I was with Caldwell Banker. I, you know, went to all of their, you know, annual events. So, um, so it really does help. It like re-motivates you and it's like the ideas he was so excited to hear about and, you know, share from other agents and the networking. So it was, it was really nice. I, I feel like I should send a, an agent a year. <laughs> Well, tell them, tell them, to, a... tell them to make platinum and they'll get invited. Okay. I think he will. We're well, working Scott, on it. That was platinum. He was, he was on track for it or he made it. So he's yeah, I think one. so. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, Chopper, did Patrick get some value out of it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Very good. So yeah, it looks like the herd is thin. So I wanted to, talk, I don't know if anybody had saw, but um, Remax has uh, had cut their senior leadership from four people running the country down to two and had a bunch of layoffs. And that just kind of made me think about, you know, us running our businesses and, you know, how do we, how do we budget like we're a fortune 100 company? And that's not only, you know, budgeting what we're doing, but the accountability piece. You know, like if we were telling, you know, Wall Street or if we were telling, you know, our leadership, what are we going to do? You know, what does that look like? And I think we lost Danielle. Looks like uh, everybody is off from this uh, Zillow or um, Zoom update. I'm here. I just, okay. uh, it goes and in, went into driving mode. <laughs> it's, and so it's a different look. So I don't see your phone only. But anyway, okay. So, so yeah, if you were telling, you know, I mean, let's take an extreme. You were telling Wall Street, hey, here's what the Coil team and the the Chopper Russo team are going to do. You know, what would we be saying, and then how would we how would we execute on that? Right. Um, you know, and I think um, both. You know almost without exception, all teams have um, people that we need to motivate, we need to get working that, you know, probably need to be, you know, pushed so that they're either successful or they say, hey, this isn't for me, like you're doing with Dan. Oh, yeah, he'll be retired soon. <laughs> but I mean, like, I think that's healthy, though, right? Because if you allow people on your team to start <laughs> we're gonna roll over into a new year and, and let's face it the new year's already started right because what closes in january is happening now right yeah i mean look to that particular situation it's a negative impact on our culture and that we cannot afford so um and i think everybody like deserves you know you or um you or patrick sitting down with them saying hey you know what can we do to help you? How can we hold you accountable, right? 
We've done that too many times now. Well, are you, talking, are you talking about with Dan or with everybody else? Well, with the like, like Tommy, we bringing him up. We got him recoached, and uh, he's he he reacted in a positive manner. But we've had other situations where they haven't, and those are the ones we got to cut loose. How many do you have on your team, Chopper? Nine licensed. Okay. Yeah, I have the same. And uh, Chopper and I talked about someone on my team as well, which you and I talked about as well, Rob, that I have a meeting with. We just uh, stopped her on Zillow, but um, I have a meeting with her tomorrow. And, uh, you know, she's a alley. She's about to be, you know, cut loose. She's about to be introduced to the <laughs> free, free agency. <laughs> yes, yes, or, yes. Or, or, or recruited by the referral company. Yes, I uh, highly suggesting her to go into referral. I mean, honestly, though, I think it, it's it's the best thing, though, and not not only for you and your culture, but you know, for her as well, because she's not really in the business if she's not putting time in. Like, why the hell should the two of you bust your ass for somebody to be successful when they don't want to even put the time in. True. Correct. And and it is the culture. Other people on the team are always like, where is she? Where is she? Like, why do we have someone on our team, you know, who's, you know, with one foot out the door, just never participating when everybody makes an effort to, you know, be a part of meetings and events. It's just not right. No, and and you know, for her, I I really think after being around people, either they're like Academy Award candidates or they just don't they just don't get it, right? Because they talk to you like, oh, I'm surprised, I had some bad luck. This ha like everything under the sun except for them, right? Right. We've already went through every bad luck scenario, so now it's like the last six months have just been you know, basically not working. Yeah, and, and you know what? If they're not, and I hate to say this to, to everybody here, but if you don't have like a um, a calendar and a um, commitment to prospecting, you know, you're just going to get the same, maybe even worse, right? Than what you got this year. Correct. So, and uh, just out of curiosity, like, do you, uh, the three of you, do you have time built in for, like, new lead gen or prospecting, or do you have, like, a um, a need to get two or three appointments a week? Oh, Glenn's out of fire, Chief Baker. Um, do you have a, a, like, do you have a need to be... Um, on two appointments yes. or meeting people, meeting two people a week. Like what's your personal um, kind of hot spot where if you're not hitting it, you're, you're, you're concerned. I'll start with you chopper. Do you have to be on like one or two appointments a week or what's your. Yeah. I mean, I, I also go off my listings. I got to have a minimum th 30 listings at a time, you know, one balances with the other. Um, but as far as uh, like a minimum for me, uh, it just goes with the transactions. Yeah, I, 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 I remember every week. Did anybody ever hear of the core C O R E? I think so, but refresh I, I think, my memory. I think it was mostly for lenders, right? And um, the core was probably eight or 10 years ago was like 30 grand to be a part of it a year, 2,500 a month. And it was all about like high accountability. It was five, um, five handwritten notes per week, two in-person meetings with um, people that can give you extra business, right? All of those like core principles, I guess that's why they called it the core. Um, and, and a lot of people that went through it, were were really successful. They were committed to doing it. I don't know if it was peer pressure, if it was the investment that they made that caused them to to be very very consistent about making sure they had their two. You know, and, and for realtors, they had to meet with agents that could refer them business. So they had to set up two of those meetings every week. 
And if you can imagine, if you're a lender, especially an unaffiliated lender, having two of those appointments per week is going to make a big, a huge difference, right? And for us, like we need to figure out, you know, is there a way that, you know, we can have, you know, maybe one of those uh, meetings every week on somebody that can help us grow our business. You know, maybe it's Chamber of Commerce, maybe it's meeting with, you know, the township administrator, maybe it's meeting with, you know, somebody that's in a position of influence to help us get more business. Um, and then, you know, uh, Tom Tool is like, I get freaked out if I don't go on two listing appointments a week. You know, that's his hot button. You know, when I was talking to him, I was trying to put the, uh, you know, the T2 in, uh, in in Philadelphia. And what happened was he had his new agent class coming on that same week. Like, Rob, I don't think it's going to be good because it's going to be chaos. So, you know, his hot button is like, I got to go on two appointments every week. And um, I don't know. Um, Charles, you have a hot button? Um, <laughs> I'm in survival mode, dude, right now. I've got uh, about three, three and a half million that I'm trying to close before the end of the year. Um, one property I had three offers on. I'm representing two of the three buyers. Um, uh, the other one is uh, one that we've been having problems with a, a dam down in uh, Hopewell, Princeton area. Um, so no, I don't, I'm, I'm actually, as a result of being on all these calls, going back to the basics and, 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 and going back to goal setting, um, going back to creating standards, um, the, the unique value proposition, all that good stuff. You there? Yeah. Okay. So like right now I have about seven listings, just had a closing, um, Working on on getting two of those properties under contract. I uh, have another one longer term that's under contract to be developed. The site on two hundred six. It's to close probably in the September time frame. And, and then, what, uh, what are you doing, Charles, to to like keep the business rolling in though? Um, most of it has been from my listings and past clients. So. Like, for example, on the farm listing that I have, that I have the three offers on, I probably had about 20 appointments in the last month. They came out of nowhere. And I would say about 10 of them, I'm working with two already as clients. And I'm working on adding a few more of those people that I feel are ready, willing, and able, uh, you know, to do, to, to pull a trigger in the next three to six months. So a lot of it comes through my listings in terms of the inquiries, especially on the commercial side of the business. And so a lot of prospective buyers come in that way. And then I also get listings that way. So I'm looking at a, a fairly large project that has been approved in Lebanon up on 22202 area. Um, and that was as a result of personal networking. And then what they've, what they've observed me doing along the route 206 corridor, for example, in the Hillsborough area on the commercial side. And I'm representing a buyer actually for the Weikert building on 206, ironically. I think we have the LOI almost approved for that. And that's a past client and friend. Yeah. So, but um, no, but I don't have like systems and I don't have the systems in place or the, you know, I don't have um, squeeze pages, all that kind of stuff that are set up automated, like using click funnels or anything like that which is something that I really kind of want to do going forward as I begin to build a team. What, what about meeting, even meeting, you know, one person a, a week or two people a month, Charles, that can give you more business? Like, hey, reach out. Is is Herb Schneider still working? No, he retired, actually. But, but and then his wife was really ill. So, uh, yeah, no, that stopped a couple of years ago. I did get a bunch of leads from him, for example. Right, but- Right, but I mean, he still has he's still a man of influence. Of course, yeah. No, I, I touch I touch base periodically with him. Right, maybe twice I, a year. I, I guess I'm suggesting, you know, maybe you know, go for coffee in person. You know, absolutely find find, you know, twenty six of them every other week and see how that works because you know I think that's going to help you build those relationships and, um, you know, if you were thinking about how are you going to commit 
to Wall Street what Charles Horn Inc. is going to do in the next 12 months, you know, you need a better plan than I'm waiting for inquiries on my listings to materialize, right? Right. Yep. Chopper, uh, how about you? You're on mute, sir. Hit me with that again, Rob. Sorry. So I said, like, what um, what are you doing, you know, personally to ensure that, you know, your your business, referral business will be abundant in 25 what do you mean referral? Like, so are you meeting? Are you meeting with people? I, I don't. I don't imagine that you're doing a whole lot of cold calling, right? No, not really. No, you're not calling expired. You're not um, doing FISBO calls, right? So, like, what is what is Chopper himself doing to to um, make Pinnacle next year? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'm all over the place between the videos, EDDM, you know, around town. I'm involved in 20 zillion other things. I mean, I got I got seven houses in Oakland coming up in the beginning of the year. But uh, like, I mean, even if you went and met with all the people in the, the restaurants that have sandwiches or plates named after you, and then, you know, you made you were intentional about you know, not calling, but having an in-person meeting and trying to be a connector because you have a, a tremendous network. And then, you know, obviously you're always there for the business, right? Hey, you know, who do you know that I can help? You know, yeah. uh, these these restaurants, yay, yeah, my my chef's daughter needs to sell her house or, you know, um, you know, uh, one of my staff's father died. We need to sell their house, right? I mean, listen, one of the reasons why I have a P.O. box is I do a lot of business in the post office by the P.O. box. Right. I'm accidentally in purpo on purpose at different places. Like we, uh, <laughs> you got to see the business I do at the hardware store on Saturdays. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. like I said, I'm, and I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be that conduit to take us back to, you know, where you were before. You know, you were in the position you're at now where, you know, you have a lot of referrals coming in, you know, where is that um, new business, you know, uh, spirit that you had when you started, right, to get, to get shit going? I mean, it's such a good foundation now, you know, it, at, at what point do I call my different things that I do? Um, like we, there's certain ads I do. I just call them institutional. It's just like they're they're constantly being done. As far as driving traffic, it's from my activities, not just right. my advertising activities, my involvement activities. Right, and, and and I think what I'm thinking about is not so much about you know spending money, but I'm thinking about things that move the needle culturally that help you. Um, reconnect with some relationships and generate more business and and i hope the people on your team will you know take notice of what you're doing you know with all these years in the business if chopper danielle charles and and um chief baker are doing it then everybody should be doing it on the team you know i mean one of the things i always do is acknowledge people's birthdays you know um and that usually segues into things from there you know, um, you know, look, there's a lot of things I do accidentally on purpose, you know, uh, birthdays would be one of them, just where I'm at, and where I go. I mean, listen, I'm always doing my nonprofit stuff, my involvement in town. Um, I run into people all the time. A guy asked me to go move a sign, okay, because my installer put it in a bad spot. I went over there, tell the guy we're taking care of it. He goes, oh, uh, my wife and I want to talk to you in February. We're going to list the house. You know, so it's those kind of things happen. Gotcha. Well, then everything all right at the fire or was that uh, just a false alarm? Oh, no. It's been a long 24 hours. Let's put it that way. I've slept in my car. Oh, Wow. And you still found the time to make it. That's impressive. Always do. So um, 
And Glenn, do you do anything like that to uh, besides technology to um, to uh, you know keep your business uh, regenerating? So um, <clears throat> I have a technique where every eighteen months I add a different pillar, uh, meaning something I don't advertise today because by then it's operationalized. And um, from a, a day to day, like what I measure each day. Uh, I measure conversations for myself, just like I do every team member appointments, met appointments set. And then um, we have one measure that's kind of outside of that, which is called BLDs. I got that from my corporate world, which is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, I have to do two of those a week. But you're still doing two BLDs. And what are like the type of people that you're meeting with for those fun? Sometimes they're influential people, um, to council members. Sometimes it's just people that I haven't connected with in quite some time. Um, it's yep. It's different than a call, right? Oh yeah. Way different. So, yep. so, and then are, are your team members doing that Glenn or no? Yeah, they, they all have uh, one BLD. Most miss the target. They meant they get about 50% of what their target is on it. I think that's the average on the team other than myself. Um, and they have, uh, you know, with, and obviously past client reach out um, is super important right now. That's the number one place for us that we're focusing. And I we got to keep them, we got to keep them being clients because if we don't, they'll become a past client. I, I love the, um, you know, that face-to-face -face BLD mindset. Now, you say that they have they have a goal of two and they they often come in at half of it. They have a goal of four a month and they often only do two. Okay. And we also have an event goal. Um, everyone has to do you know events. Um, so there's an event goal, but that's basically one every two months. So so uh, Charles, like I, I would try to. So Glenn, you, you do two a week, right? That's eight a month? For me, yes. For my BLDs, yep. Yeah. So Charles, if you did one a week, you know, for starters, and you, you were intentional on who you met with, and, you know, Chopper, you're like the mayor of Oakland. Like, you know, that would be really impactful, in my opinion, for you. You know, and, and Danielle, for you, it would be, you know, a role model for some of your team members. I mean, it can't be, there can't be anything negative about it right you know if you have 10 team members you know two people are going to have a great story from that i don't know danielle you're yeah. still here no i'm here yeah absolutely and and do you do you um do, do you prioritize and think the same way as as glenn like in terms of setting these intentional meetings or not so much um intentional meetings you mean for i'm sorry for my team members no, or no. so so for myself yeah to, to meet with like the township administrator or school principal somebody that can refer business to you right and yes. have face to face meeting um you know Glenn tries to do two of those uh, a week his team members do two a month on a goal of four um you know, um, let's mix it up and try to get people out of the traditional, you know, way. And to be honest, even the, like the Zillow stuff, um, you know, most agents aren't doing what they're supposed to do with it. And the ones that are, are, are doing well, but most won't do it. So True. anyway, um, have you started your your goal plan your business planning with your team members yet danielle i'll start with you um we did not start it yet we actually i'm starting my first only because i was traveling but my our first meetings this week <clears throat> i mean we talked about it but one-on-one -on -one is starting this week and then to answer your other question 
what I've I, in our area for some reason there's just been so many new businesses um so I've been doing like interviews and videos and getting out every week to like introduce a new business introduce myself to a new business um letting the new business owners know that I have a lot of clients moving into the area and I'd like to share any information about their new business so it's been um like a very easy, non-confrontational, like uh, opening to sit down and talk to people, like a win-win, um, where you know I'm I'm really there helping them promote their business. And have you had uh, any tangible results from that yet? I mean, the results have been more. Um, I mean, not like I walk into the store and they say, yeah, I, want, <laughs> I know five people who want to list their home, but it's more just getting uh, the branding, our name around, um, you know, it's that marketing where people are like, oh, I see you everywhere or I know her. I mean, I'm really, really working on like my top 250 past clients in Sphere and really encouraging every single one of my team members to do the same thing where we are um you know we're, we're really you know trying to work on the farm the sphere like and dig really deep into the local areas that we live in as yeah. one form of getting business so i i have a, a a suspicion and a really strong suspicion that a lot of the people that aren't successful if you had a morning um glenn what do you call your morning meeting a huddle yes it's called the huddle sorry so if, if if all of us did a morning huddle you know i think two-thirds of your team would be missing because they're probably not even working yet and um if you do that morning huddle and then you get everybody ready to to hit the ground running and do your morning huddle with them required to be on camera so that they're awake and dressed and ready to go and do it at a you, you do yours at nine glenn nine fifteen 915. So if you're not dressed at 915, you know, yeah, that's you right. Got, you got a problem, right? Yeah. You, I actually have it in my ICA, Rob, that they're required to attend for a week. Do, do you um, have them on camera, Glenn? Uh, it depends. The ladies I uh, don't force to be on. The men generally do it. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I would probably, if I was starting it up, I'd probably suggest that they're all on camera. Yeah, I would. I would. I did. It started that way. All the new people are. All the old ones are not. Old meaning uh, tenured employees on the team here, or tenured agents. So um, try that morning meeting. You know, do the business planning. I know that you all care about your team members, and it must be frustrating to see them not be everything that they can be. Right? I mean, you know, um, Chopper. Who's your best team member besides Patrick? Uh, fluctuates. Today be Benny. Okay. Tomorrow might be my brother. So, but I mean, but Patrick's an overwhelming winner on the team. Um, oh, yeah. You got two or three that are huge standouts. And, you know, Danielle, you know, Scott is, you know, he's absolutely crushing it, right? And, yes. um, <laughs> you know, we just need to get everybody to be, you know, on that same, on that same level. And, and, you know, Scott was struggling. You know, and some of Glenn's people were struggling. And it's only for the leadership that you have, you know. I mean, you know, Scott wasn't able to pay his bills, right, Danielle? Correct. And hopefully now he's managing his money well, but you know, it's definitely a big change. And, you know, I don't know why team members don't copy him. You know, I think he has a mindset that's different. Definitely not afraid to approach people and call. Agreed. Anyway, I feel I feel like we had a private therapy session here, everybody. <laughs> the, the Zoom change, I think a lot of people just gave up, but um, it's already 9.01, so I'll let you get on to your days. I'm here if you want to, you know, pick my brain and and let's not let too much time go by before we get everybody um, excited about 2025 and, and living by their calendar and um, having a little more discipline, because that's what makes the difference. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Rob. Thanks, Take Rob. Bye-bye.